This is Actar's Reviews, from anime to figures and beyond. And welcome to another episode of Actar's Figure Reviews. As many of you know, I am a huge Kamen Rider fan, with some of my favorites being Fies, Kabuto, and Double. But as for Super Sentai, um, not so much. But I could not, not watch one of Toei's latest Super Sentai shows, Hikoni Sentai Akiba Ranger, or Unofficial Sentai Akiba Ranger. As the name states, it's unofficial. While it's still being produced by Toei, the company in charge of Super Sentai and Kamen Rider, it isn't one of the official Super Sentai series. Instead, it's a parody, poking fun at not only Super Sentai tropes, but otaku as well. Not to mention, the series is targeted towards adults, with meta jokes, Sentai guest appearances, and sometimes somewhat mature humour. The Akiba Rangers fight to protect Akihabara from the villainous group Stenma Oats, who are trying to cleanse Akihabara of its otaku culture. Now I don't want to spoil the fun of the show, so I won't be getting into any further plot details. Let's just say that fans of Super Sentai, anime and otaku culture will really enjoy the series. I myself, who am not a Sentai fan in the slightest, still managed to get into it as I just love similar otaku parody shows like Densha Otoko and Genshiken. Interestingly enough, like Densha Otoko and Genshiken, Akiba Rangers also has its very own anime within the show, Nijiyome Gakuen Zukun Aoi, or Rainbow Bride Academy Zukun Aoi. Oh yes, did I mention that their henshin device and weapon is a figure of the anime's main character and that they have an anime Itasha that can transform into a giant robot? Yep, you can't get any more awesome than that. Anyways, that's enough of an introduction. Of course, being the marketing geniuses that they are, Bandai has already started to roll out SH figure arts of the characters. And the first figure in the line is of course SH figure arts Akiba Red, whose true identity is Otaku Akagi Nobuo. The box itself is simply fabulous, what with all the rainbows, most likely in reference to Zikun Aoi, uh, Akiba Rangers with unofficial stamped on the plastic window. On the back, we have a bio of Akiba Red, along with a couple of pictures showing off his accessories and possibility. Unfortunately, these giant handcuffs you see here, called the Deka Wapa, are sold separately, bundled together with the SH Figure Arts Deka Red. Now that's a pity as it's one of the Akiba Ranger's main weapons. So that's pretty much it for the box. But before we open it up, we do have a set of stands bundled together with the first wave of these figures. Here, Bandai is uncharacteristically generous as you not only get one, but three stands, one for each Akiba Ranger. The bases are personalized to match the individual Ranger's colors and each of them have their names and the character printed on them. A, Ki, and Ba respectively. Other than that, there's not much else to say about them as they are pretty much your regular three-jointed stands. So, coming back to the main figure itself, let's open this up and take a look at the contents inside. Besides the instruction sheet, we do have a little pamphlet advertising the other Akiba Ranger merchandise, such as the Blu-ray DVD discs, the other SH Figures figures, and the 1-1 scale replica of the henshin device called the Moe Moe Zikun, which I will definitely be reviewing when it comes out. And here is Akiba Red in figure form. Honestly, I would really love to see Nobuo's expression when he finds out that a figure has been made of him. But I digress. In traditional SH Figures fare, you do have some amazing details going on here. The paint is sharp and all the minute paint apps like his gold trim hair and Akiba Ranger logos are flawless. Another point of detail to note would of course be Bandai's signature translucent plastic layered over sculpted detail. But instead of the compound eyes of Kamen Riders, that technique is used to recreate the chest plates and air plates of Akiba Red. This gives a superb show accurate look to the figure that adds a certain depth to it as well. And in terms of sculpted detail, from the unique helmet design to the panel lines located all throughout the figure, Bandai has again hit it out of the park. Even the belt straps and buckles on his legs are sculpted with precision, though the black doesn't really do those details any justice. But aside from that, there's really nothing much else to comment upon, as the suit itself is quite simplistic in design. 
So let's move on to articulation, something that the line is undoubtedly renowned for. In that respect, the figure doesn't disappoint. The head is on a double neck joint, though the lower ball joint is somewhat hindered by the collar. The arms are double ball jointed at the shoulder, once at the body and once at the shoulder itself, allowing for a wider range of more natural posability. Something that I failed to realize earlier is that there is a silver joint below the shoulder. The elbows are double jointed and the wrists are triple jointed. A swivel and side to side movement at the forearm and a ball joint at the wrist itself. We again have double ball joints in the waist, giving you the freedom to move the figure in just about any way humanly possible. Forwards, backwards, side to side, and side to side this way as well. If you can do it, this figure can too. Coming to the legs, we have the brilliant SH figure's leg joints that I do love so much. That being the ability to pull away from the body, giving the added clearance for the leg to move even higher. The leg itself can still move forwards and backwards, side to side, and rotate side to side. Lastly, the knees are on double joints, and the feet can move up and down, swivel side to side, and pivot side to side. Also, the front of the foot is separately articulated from the rest of the foot. Now this is unequivocally the epitome of good articulation. With this articulation, you will have absolutely no problems reenacting any of the dynamic fighting scenes from the series. No complaints from me whatsoever. Regrettably, the same cannot be said for the accessories. First and foremost, we have the Moe Moe Zikyun in gun form. Nicely detailed with a crisp Akiba Ranger logo printed on it despite its size. Next up, we have a pair of mufflers or scarves. The first one is stationary while the second one is much more dynamic. The scarves are simply attached to a ball joint at the back of the figure. They can be positioned however you like to go along with whatever pose you have the figure in, be it running, jumping, or simply having it flapping in the wind. Last but not least, we come to the exchangeable hands. Four pairs of hands are provided, which are admittedly slightly more than your average SH Figures figure. We have a pointing hand, a two fingers pointing hand, a pair of karate chop hands, a pair of gun holding hands, and a pair of relaxed open palm hands. Now these will definitely come in handy do excuse the pun, in recreating Nobuo's dramatic ranger poses. Now as figures go, this one is pretty bare bones in terms of the accessories. The Akiba rangers themselves already don't have much associated with them, and the decision to bundle the outrageous powers like the Deca Weppa separately really hurts the figure's accessory count and playability. I mean, even the Moe Moe Zikyun in figure form would have been greatly appreciated. So in conclusion, I say that Akiba Red is certainly a great addition to Bandai's repertoire of SH Figures figures. It doesn't do much, but what it does, it does well. Still, I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. If you are a fan of the show, getting the figure is of course a no-brainer. However, for figure fans or Sentai fans who collect for the figures themselves, I don't think it does enough or come with enough to warrant a purchase if you're not into the design aesthetic. Being unofficial, you won't be needing this guy to complete your Sentai figure collection. So, the Zags are saying, see you guys in the next episode.